Hey y'all. So, empowered for the task at hand. Noah <laughs> was given very specific instructions about building this ark, this safe place in the midst of the coming destruction. And it didn't happen fast. Building this kind of boat, which I don't know if any of you have been out to um, Kentucky to the, the ark, but that is on my list of things to do is to go see this replica um, of the ark. It didn't happen fast. And you think about way back when in Noah's days, what kind of tools he had available. He didn't have big machines. Um, it was extremely hard work, which their years and our years he was, are a little bit different. I mean, years were years, but his 600 years old is a little bit different than what 600 years old would be here. But Noah was um, 500 when he had his sons. And then Genesis 6, 6, I mean, 7, 6 tells us that Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came upon the earth um, or land. So Noah spent a lot of time building this boat. And I want you to think culturally, okay? So we already know that Noah was living in a very um, ugly, dark, sinful uh, culture and time. So much, in fact, that made God regret making man. So, I mean, I think we're bad now. I can only imagine how much God regrets making man. <laughs> um, but in, in this, in Noah's case, it was a very, very dark, um, just ugly place. So it had also never rained. God tells Noah to build this boat. Huge. Going to draw lots of attention. And in the midst of it, Noah's saying, there's going to be a flood. You, you know that people had to, he was the laughing stock of the world at that point in time. And Noah had a choice to make. Either do this thing that God had told him to do and be obedient or fit in with the rest of the world. See, there comes a point in time comes a point in time, Jesus, that there's no going back in our relationship with the Lord. There comes a point where we have to step over the line or go back the other way. And see, I believe that the ark was that point for Noah. What's the point for you and I? And you see, we're told that Noah was just and righteous and he was blameless in his evil generation and that Noah walked in habitual fellowship with the Lord. See, I don't think that Noah could have continued walking in habitual fellowship with the Lord and been disobedient about the ark. Do you see that? If you and I are walking in habitual fellowship, fellowship's relationship, if we are walking in habitual fellowship with the Lord, then we cannot walk in disobedience. And so let's say Noah's walking in habitual fellowship with the Lord and God says, I want you to build an ark. So let's say Noah starts. The ridicule and persecution is just intense. I mean, it, they, he's living in an evil generation. And he is the one man who is not like the others. And so Noah's trying, he's doing his thing, and he says, you know what? I just, I just can't do this. So he stops. But he can't go back to just walking in habitual fellowship with the Lord. Do you see? 
at some point in time, we have to make the choice that in order to be just and righteous and blameless, and in order to be in habitual fellowship with the Lord, it's going to require obedience of us. And if you don't know by now, let me be the first to tell you that obedience to the Lord means walking an entirely different walk than the rest of the world. <laughs> you are going to be different. Walking in habitual fellowship, doing things God's way, being a friend or a child of God is going to demand that you look different. It's going to demand that you walk different. And if we do not um, walk with him, walk like him, then we're not in habitual fellowship. And we can't just say, no, God, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And expect to continue to grow in our relationship with him. We, we can't just say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to walk like that, God. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to stay back here. The persecution is just too much. I'm too different. The world hates it too much. I'm getting too much pushback from it. I think, I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop here. We can't act like that and make those choices and expect habitual fellowship. It's disobedience. <laughs> and disobedience is not just and right and blameless. And so we have to get out of the thought of, I'm just going to coast. Because at some point in time, we're going to have to make the decision to either trust God and obey Him and continue in fellowship with Him or not. And so many, so many times people say, well, I'm not choosing. I'm, I'm not going to make this. In not choosing, you are in fact choosing. Choosing to say nothing is still choosing. At some point in time, we have to decide to trust God, to trust his voice, and to trust his way of doing and being right. If we're going to continue in habitual fellowship with him. Fellowshipping with him means choosing him. It means choosing him every day. It means choosing him over and choosing him over and choosing him over. And saying, you know, the world's just not worth it. Their opinion of me is just not worth it. It's not worth what I will lose. Losing that fellowship with God. It's not worth silencing the persecution. It's not worth lessening the ridicule. Fellowshipping with him is worth it all. Noah found that out, and it saved his house. So we'll pick it for tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.